Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing of the body Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 360. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. So good to be here talking to you. Um, boy, our conference center is coming right along, isn't it, sweetheart? I think they're putting up the stainless steel um, top on the wall over the, the sink. And they're going to uh, hopefully get your ovens up, fired up this week. Yes, and I'll be ready to cook and get get the trial runs going. And there's um, just a lot of little odds and ends they've got to do, and the cabinet guys are hopefully going to finish their stuff this week. And, and and you got the, did you get the email out already that you were going to yeah, send that was everyone? Done, that was done okay, yesterday. good. Um, the, we've got a growing list of people that are on a waiting list in case there are cancellations. So if something does happen, yeah. uh, we'd appreciate yeah, you guys we, letting no, us we know. Were, we were absolutely blown away at, with how uh, how quickly this thing filled up. It uh, it kind of took me, it took us by surprise. It's like, what, what, what we're, we're sold out? We're, we don't, we, well, and Mike, Mike puts sold out but there's no cost yeah. <laughs> that's just the way they usually say you know when the a venue's closed uh, but there's no cost to this at all the, there's no cost for the food uh, yeah, the, the, the vision and we, uh, we shared this with you guys before but our vision is is because of of our faithful partners giving this is the way the kingdom is supposed to work as far as what we're doing uh that since you know, the facilities paid for there's not a lot of overhead now because of, of this, the faithfulness of everyone that has supported our ministry. And we have conferences like this. There's no registration. There's no cost of food. There's going to be a lot of love going to that food. I can mm -hmm. tell you that right now, <laughs> a lot of anointing. Uh, that uh, the only out-of-pocket expenses anybody's going to have is to travel here in, in their hotel or, or whatever. And uh, even after the conference, uh, when we get all, we're, we're, we can't live stream simply because we don't have the bandwidth there to do that. But we are going to be recording everything, and we will post them up to both our YouTube and our Vimeo channel, or not Vimeo, yeah, Vimeo and Rumble channels. And uh, that way it's all free to everybody because the, the whole purpose of this is to prepare the remnant mm -hmm. and, and to get you the information you need and to help you grow in God so that we're all ready uh, for the That's days it. ahead. And not to... to cast anything down on those that have to charge for conferences no. because a lot of times they have to rent a large facility and, and, and pay for the the video and everything so well few, we, a lot of people don't realize like when you go to a hotel you know i've, I've been on the back side of this stuff where uh, you go to a hotel and sometimes it's 30 or thirty thousand dollars or more mm -hmm. uh just for the hotel for the for the room that you're renting to hold the meeting and i remember one time years ago with uh dr john looper we just simply wanted the um the screen to be pulled down so that we could use it for projector. Now the screen was already there on the wall. Them pulling that screen down, it was an extra eight hundred dollars a day. People don't realize yeah, this. And so much. you know, in situations like that, they have to charge yeah. just to break even. But with with our own but, facility and it's paid for that we were able to do this and I, I think this was God's vision from the very beginning. That's right. That's right. And we're we're so excited about it and we're getting uh already started getting the tables, chairs, um, everything's going ahead of plan. So, Yeah, but I've, I've been, all the uh, the stuff you ordered about the, all the tablecloths and stuff, they're, I think they're just shipping one tablecloth at a time, but they're starting to ship already. So, oh. <laughs> you know, it's like when you order 10, 15 of them, it's like, okay, there's one here, and we'll, we'll, we'll probably ship one tomorrow, maybe one next week, you know. I wanted to go ahead and get the <laughs> tablecloths because I visited a – a store in Springfield that I usually just go go get what they have on clearance and sale items and things. And I went the other day and the shelves were almost empty. Yeah, they're all sitting in a somewhere between here and China. Well, and so I just thought, well, I'll get that ordered and we'll have it. Um, and so we're it, we're just going right along. We're so thankful for all our partners and all that they've done. And yeah, and just, um, just soon as uh, it starts turning a little cooler. Uh, the grandsons and I are going to start doing some landscaping out, out on the outside. Everything's been done on the inside. It still almost looks like an abandoned warehouse on the outside because we put all the money on the inside. <laughs> well, but it'll it'll look nice though. It's, it's going to look you, nice. Um, spray off the the siding. It'll look great out there. Yeah, Dad, and I have a few little things to paint. We just need to bring the uh, uh, the landscaping back under control. 
But it, it's it's going to be fun. The grandsons and I will have a lot of fun doing that. Well, we've got so many things going on, guys. Um, we're thankful. We're going to give God praise because we got rain last night. There's more coming. Yes. Uh, I was talking to my grandsons the other day. I said, look at that little cloud up in the sky. We're going to do like they did in the Bible and believe that, that the rain's coming. And uh, that that's one of the things that, that I think that people that are in states where they've, they've went ahead and – and uh, done away with the abortion to whatever extent they could, I believe that that's, that's something we can go before the Lord in prayer about yes. and say, Fa- Father, block everything the enemy's doing. The, you know, the legislature went along with your plan. And so I, I think that that's, that's big and in I, the kingdom. And I think that one of the, the things, you know, they're, 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 they're blaming global warming for all this stuff. Uh, but when you know everything like we know that, that we have discovered like with scalar weaponry and how that Russia and China has really developed, uh, and they're, they may be on with like their 20th generation on that, like we have the Heart Project and some others here in America, which we're on like maybe the second or third generation. Uh, part of the patents when you look at that is weather control. And so I think that we are actually under, because when you look at the drought and the heat, It's specifically hitting Western nations. It's not hitting Russia. It's not hitting China. It's not hitting a lot of these other areas. And uh, there's something different about it that when you look at it, I think there are certain indicators that it may be a uh, scalar-based weather warfare that we're Mm -hmm. engaged in. And so I think that prayer can change a lot of that. Yeah, I do too. You know, it's, it's, and there's a difference between the judgment of God and this, the scalar weaponry and different things. And I think that part of understanding Bible prophecy is being able to separate the two because one of the things that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to judge those who are destroying the earth. And you can do that through the, the scalar warfare. I sure can. Well, and, and there's so much going on right now that it's, it's the agenda that they're trying to follow and God keeps interrupting it. Uh, I saw on Steve Quayle's alerts that uh, people were telling him that at Sam's and Costco, their freezers had went out. All mysteriously went out. And they had all of that food had to be dumped. And, and that, I, I believe that's part of the plan. I think that's why the, the food plants have burned. It's part of the plan. And it, but, it's too systematic and mm-hmm. too many. It is, and it, it just looks like we're going down the tubes, but I'm telling you, God's going to do something. You watch. Um, he's going to show these people that, that laugh and say there's no one can stop us. He's going to show them who can stop them. We've even had some of those that are prophetic say, listen, there's going to there's gonna, there's gonna stuff come where there's going to be like a division among the states, which I think part of it's going to be over abortion and different things. Uh, but the, the end thing is that uh, America ends up being peaceful and that – we have we become agricultural again. That you know, that uh, people begin having family-owned farms again and everything else. Um, I, I think in the in the midst of all this, God is going to use it to strip a lot of the power from the corporate world mm-hmm. that have uh, that do not have America's best interest at heart at all. Well, we've got to get some legislators legislators in there that will um, question. Why so much of, of America's farmlands being bought up by either overseas or Bill Gates or I mean George, and George Soros? I mean, you know, and so so I I'm looking for you know I know God intervened in the 2016 election, uh, in the 2020 election, I can see how He used that to expose everything. I think we're going to really pray and see God turn things around in the midterms because that's that's crucial for things to get turned around because we've got to have some people in there that will stand up and say look at this and and get it out there so much that your general population is going to understand what's going on because it's such a sham everything they do is such a sham it's so scripted it just kind of gags you you get so yeah. sick of it. well ted cruz the other day we were watching uh he was right up here in Springfield, so it was a local report. But, you know, the 1-6 uh, committee thing that they're having up there, the Democrats brought in a Hollywood director. Yeah, I thought That's that was interesting. That's directing all of it, I'm thinking. <laughs> Boy, you want to talk about propaganda. Well, they know how much that sways people. Yeah. You know, that's why they have advertising like they do. They've learned how to sway the public to buy this, eat this. And so so they're just doing the same thing. I, th- I think people wake up because I've, I've heard people talking. It's like right now the – 
the Republicans that they don't want to run against. There's all these packs that are just running horrible ads against them and everything. But when you hear the talk on the man on the street, it's like saying, you know, these Democrats are really scared of these people. I think I'll vote for them. <laughs> so it's 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 kind of it's it's flipping on them because right. people are waking up to just what dirty politics is. Yeah. And you know, guys, we we just we, I think that's why we need to have discernment. God God is doing a thing, and one of the things I have noticed too that um, uh, just in, in things that I'm I'm hearing on the news feeds, and I, I think it's either Soros based or similar guys that are writing, but it's on both sides of the aisle that we're having evangelicals saying, "Listen, these Christian nationalists are now a threat to evangelicalism," and then you have on the on the left side saying these. Christian nationalists are a threat to democracy, but when you go back historically, it was Christian nationalists that helped found the nation. That they were they were willing to put blood, sweat, and tears and whatever they needed into to establish the Constitution, to establish these things. But it's, it's this Orwellian reverse thing that oh, these people are going against the 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 New World Order agenda, so we've got to begin attacking them. So we're going to see it. Uh, both on and uh, uh, evangelicalism, these guys have reduced uh, so much of evangelicalism to nothing that's remotely biblical anymore. Yeah, it was really interesting on the uh, woman that's running for Senate that's from St. Louis. She's a descendant of the Bush family, you know, Bush beer. And they've been running ads, and I'm going to have to look this up. Uh, I guess it's true because they had someone say that she's apologized for it, but her family's part of something called the Society of the, uh, the Veiled, Veiled Prophet. Prophet. Yeah, the Society I of have, the Veiled Prophet. I've never heard that, and it shows a picture of her bowing down in this ritual, and I thought, I have never heard of that one. I'm going to have to look at that and see what that is. I, obviously, it it's was white supremacist. Type white of supremacist. Uh, and so I thought, boy, that that might be one of the things connected to the place I was raised in. Yeah. Remember they had that club down there? Uh, well, that we we knew that there was some kind of occult organization out of St. Louis that yep. was kind of pulling right. the strings, right? And but I wonder I, if that was I it. wonder if that's it. Yeah. So anyway, that was so the, the Democrats are are airing the dirty laundry of the other Democrats that gave us a piece of the I, puzzle. I thought, what are the chances of that? <laughs> uh, but it's it's so interesting what's going on, and and I know how bad it looks, but I I just think that God is going to give us some time, you know, at the, at the very end. And you see if you agree with me, Mike, on this. As we're coming up to the very last, don't you think emphasis will be on get as many souls saved as you can? Oh, and, I, and that needs to be our thought every day. But I'm just saying I don't think we can bring the harvest in until the remnant is prepared. It's got to it's be awakened, activated, and prepared. Right. And, and – uh, I think there's going to be such a contrast between the remnant and and the the nauseating thing that is the, the modern church. I mean, they're they're so asleep. And you know, one of the things that God has had me been—I guess it was like a year and a half ago—he said, "Pray that they wake up, so where I don't have to make things really, really, really bad to wake them up." You know, it's like God was saying, "Listen, seek my face, that there would be a grace." that those that need to be awakened would be awakened. You know, it's like, how bad is it going to get for they wake up, Mike? Pray that I don't have to keep turning up the notches. Well, 9-11 was a wake-up call. Yeah. And, and, I mean, all the things that are going on right now, and, all of it's a wake-up well, call. Well, and you hear of, you know, how many people, the churches were full and everything because it scared people. Yeah. And then it just slowly went back and the, the way it they was. Went back and to so, sleep. Yeah. you know, I, I don't have any doubt that there's still some bad things to come. I'm not naive and I've not lost, you know, what God showed me years ago. I just see things to have hope about. I, I see changes. I see God answering prayers, and I, and I think that that we're going to have enough time for God to to do a great, great thing, a showing of His power. Well, when you look at all the great miracles of the Bible, every single one of them, it wasn't in the good times that they were happening. It was in the times where it challenged God's people. That they, they, it was like when the when they when they were when their back was up against the wall. And historically, the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, thrives when there's when there's pressure, because it, it's like you you get out of this Laodicea mode back into into church and remnant mm-hmm. mode, and that's when all of a sudden you start seeing the the enemy defeated. There's there's an old axiom 
uh, that says that hard times make strong people. Strong people make good times. Good times make weak people. Weak people make hard times. And that's the cycle that we have found ourselves in. But what, you know what, do you know what that means? It means that the strong people are awakening. Yeah, that's that, true. That God is going to move in. And, and, you know, sometimes, and historically we have seen this, that sometimes some of the people that would be the least likely that you think, oh, you know, God could never use them. They're just in too much bondage, all the stuff the enemy says. When God begins to move, those are the people that awaken. Oh, that's right. And boy, they become are, generals yeah, in the that's army of right. God. They're a force to be reckoned with when they get free. And that's what God was reminding me of this week. So I knew where he was having me head on the, the podcast because he was reminding me of what it felt like when I was in such bondage. And, you know, it's been so long, so many years, I it's hard for me to even imagine it now. It just seems like I can't even imagine. But um, I felt like I was in a pit. And what I would do is, is like, I'd gain some strength sometimes. You know, I'd try to pray in things that were seem so impossible to me, but I'd try my best, and I'd try to climb up, just like you're, think about climbing up a slippery slope or something, you know, and you're just taking your fingernails and digging in, trying to dig, and I'd slide back down. And then then it, it's it's like the heaviness would, would just overtake me. And uh, God was uh, reminding me of Psalm 42, um, 40 verse 2 it says he brought me up also out of a an horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings and that's essentially what god did with me mm -hmm. i mean and and the only way that that he could have brought me out of that pit was to supernaturally miraculously move the heaviness off of me to give me time to get established in faith in the word and 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 get he put me on a rock, but then when all that stuff came back after the eight months and it all came back, I had to fight it off. You know, it, it it's not just God lifts you out of bondage and then, you know, some people just get miraculously delivered. But in my situation, there were so many demonic attachments and so much junk with the occult in there. It was a fight. Well, and, and I think one of the things that, that your your story really needs to highlight because it, 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 one of the things that, that I noticed back, you remember the, the great healing revivals under Earl Roberts and all that, and so you had these medically proven healings mm -hmm. that the doctor said, okay, yes, you your 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 knees were uh, basically frozen with arthritis. You had been in this wheelchair for 10 years. Now you're walking and leaping and praising God. One of the things that they had found is that five years later, many of these people were right back in the same shape they were. Do you know why? Because God gave them supernatural freedom. He set them on the rock. But then they said, okay, now I can be at ease in Zion. I can go back to my Laodicean way of doing things. I'm just more comfortable instead of pressing into the kingdom. And because that many of those things will try to come back. And that's why God says, listen, when I get you free and I get this stuff off you, get established in the kingdom, mm -hmm. learn all the words you can do, learn your authority, because now you don't have this pressure on you right. to keep you out of the word. So absorb it. Begin doing all the things and learning all the things that you couldn't do so that when the enemy comes back, they don't find somebody that's easy prey, but they find a giant killer. Yeah, that's it. And then and, and that's what you did because it, it was like there was well, this wasn't, turning point. It wasn't easy. No. I can tell you because now the, the eight months that I was totally free and I was just learning the word, I didn't feel any pressure. I didn't feel anything. It was just the first time in my life I'd ever experienced that. I mean, this this had been with me my entire life. It just got worse the older I got. Um, and so when I got free from that, oh, I was so thankful to God. But then it was in August. August is one of the worst months for anybody that's ever been connected to the occult. There's so much activity. There's so much going on. Uh, it's in, during this time of um, you dog know dog days, days and and um, serious and it, zenith. oddly enough, our uh, ball team at the, the high school I went to were bulldogs, and I thought everything was about you know animals, and they'd have cow days, and I just thought, oh, we we were a mockery and didn't know it. Um, but I remember I was trying to think back, and and I remember well because I can I was always a strong person. I thought like um, even though I was so depressed, 
I just wanted to lay in the bed all day, I would force myself to get up and force myself to do things. Um, but there, there would be any time I tried to make a spiritual advancement, like climb out of that pit, it, I just couldn't do it. Try it, to read the word. You know, just. Oh, my word, I'd get such a pain in the back of my head. I mean, I had, I had demons just pounding on me. And I had heard a lot about spiritual warfare and things like that, but it took, um, I, th- I think the, the main person that, that was the anointing on him was strong was Rod Parsley. Mm-hmm. And I watched him every day. And I, was, I got so strong in my faith that I had authority over the enemy. And so I've just made up my mind. I'll tell you what, you may have come back and pounced on me, but the greater one is inside of me, yeah. and you ain't staying. <laughs> this time, you, when you this showed time, up, you found a warrior. That's right. It ain't going to be like it was before. <laughs> and I may be country, and I may be uneducated, but I know my authority. <laughs> there you go. And, and, so, and, and no matter what the pressure was that used to be on her, they found in that moment, although there was a struggle with it, because any time that you're in a fight, that by definition is a struggle, mm-hmm. okay? What they found was the greater one was on the inside. There was more kingdom on the inside of her than the occult of pressure on the outside. And it wasn't that way before, though. No, it wasn't. And, and to show you, you can, I know I was saved because I had conviction of sin. Everything I ever did wrong, I was just so convicted, wanted to serve God with all my heart. I just couldn't do it. And so I know I was saved, salvation was there, but I was not walking in the kingdom exactly. because I didn't know my authority. I didn't know, I didn't even know, I knew the basic sins, but I didn't know all we know now of that a lot of things we do, even in church, is pagan. Yeah. So, so if we you're didn't trying, understand the commandments, the no, feast, nothing. Nothing. And wrong timing of things. And, um, you know, God just step by step showed us how to get out of that because i'm telling you whatever is in st louis whether it's part of this thing we talked about the veiled prophet or it's just a major occult um power i mean it's nothing it was nothing to mess with unless you knew your authority i don't blame anybody that's in a church down there that's ever tried spiritual warfare because they probably got their lunch eat as we've we've seen time and time again there was one uh precious older man and his wife that came to a church down there, well, he came up against Freemasonry. And they ended up um, letting him go. And I, I, even though I was, that was when I was in bondage, I was, I was grateful they were getting him out of there. I, and, and that had to be back knowledge coming to the forefront because I, sh- I didn't even know anything about freemasonry then i didn't know but i remember feeling oh good they'll be safe get them out of here so they'll be safe because i somewhere in the back of my mind i knew what was getting ready to hit those old people Mm -hmm. and they were very sweet very very good people um and so anybody that would have tried to get out of that and i think that's like that in a lot of these towns around here you know i just think that there's a there's an occult presence i think it's it's ruled the ozarks I think it's ruled and uh, destroyed so many lives. But God said he'd turn it around, and I'm seeing him turn it around. Oh, absolutely. He's, he'll do what he says he'll do. Over and over again in the Psalms, we see where God takes you out of the miry clay, God takes you out of the pit. In fact, there's also scriptures that once you get out and you get established in him, that Father caused them to fall in the pit they've dug for me. Mm-hmm. Father, let the let the let the snare that the fowler fall into his own snare. <laughs> David said that a lot. <laughs> and so there's there's this turning point, guys. That because there there there, I believe now many of you have already experienced that anointing. Don't waste that time that God set you up on that rock. Get established in your authority. Get established in your kingdom. Get just as full of the word as you can get, so that you can face your giants. Because all of us have to face the giants. We have got to eventually right. bring down that Goliath, because that becomes a testimony. Because the, the word works, you know, one of the things that, that, uh, that I, I firmly believe and I have seen over the years, that it's, it's not just, okay, I went to church, and the preacher had this whammy, and he whammed all this stuff off of me, and we almost get into this hokum that it's almost like I'd, I've actually seen them put take um, uh, duct tape and put a big O X in front of you. You know, if you stand on this spot, no, there's, there's, a, there's a time, there's a gracing gifting of God that can set you free. But then from then, 
there is this testimony that you're building of getting in the word and learning your authority so that when when that giant showed up you ended up with the head of that giant swinging off of its body yeah and what that doing you know what that does mary it becomes to where you can duplicate that in somebody else's life here are the scriptures here are the promises here's the anointing here's the things that's right so it doesn't end up you know it's almost like you know the stars had to be in the right position and this had to be in the right position and uh for you to get free no it's the kingdom functioning and learning our authority learning the word standing on those promises and I, i really believe that there is there is going to be a supernatural move of god i think many are already beginning to experience where god wakes them up god begins to set them free and I wrote about that in, in the, the Kingdom Priest, and I want to read this because God gave me two basic definitions of the remnant. And the first one is the remnant is comprised of those who have a true heart for God, just like you did back then. You love God with all your heart. You just you couldn't serve him and have a deep desire to be faithful to him alone regardless of the cost. This can prophetically include those that are in some type of spiritual bondage which frustrates this holy desire within them. As the kingdom is manifested and decreed, destruction is released upon the enemies of God. Now, guys, I think we're, we're in, that, in that type of moment right now. God is getting ready to spot judgment. He's going to decree destruction upon those that have kept his people uh, in bondage. His remnant will experience salvation and deliverance that will enable them to serve their king unfettered. And then the second definition that God gave me, and see if this resonates with you, baby. There will be... Uh, an accelerated growth in the remnant that one will produce a matured and balanced understanding of the word of God that has great depth, and two will enable them to accurately hear the voice of God with a proven track record, and three will allow them to become highly proficient in prayer and spiritual warfare. In other words, the remnant's destiny is to become God's special forces for their generation. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, you know, I think we're we're coming to a time too. Why we're talking about this today is um, Psalm thirty seven twenty three through twenty four. Let me read that real quick. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Even though I was in that pit, God always had a hold on me. Yeah, he always had a hold on me. Didn't let um, us get in a situation we couldn't get out of. Even though I look back and think. Man, one situation after another, they were trying to kill us it, for years. We just we just didn't recognize what was going on. So so it had gone on for so long. We just thought that was just the way it was. Well, and I think a lot of people do. I think yeah. a lot of Christians have been in these pits, and and they're in a pit. They're trying to get out. They can't get out no matter what it is, and and they're just thinking this is just how it is. This is suffering for the Lord. But sometimes, you know, look look at what happened to Joseph. He went in a pit. His brothers put him in a pit, but he ended up. You know, saving all of them. Yes, yeah, second second highest in command in all of Egypt. And so look at what God can do when he brings you out of the pit. Um, because that's that's what I sense is getting ready to happen, that, that I, I think a lot of people just, you know, have said, oh, man, things are getting worse. Okay, we're going into big tribulation. Everything's going to just continue to get worse, and, and we are going to see darkness increase. But at the same time, I, there's a smackdown coming. I keep hearing that from heaven. There's a smackdown coming on these people that have done these horrible things. And when the smackdown happens, there's going to be a release. People are just going to be delivered out of pits because a lot of what, what this smackdown includes is the mind control mechanism that's over everything. Yes. I mean, they have used this thing to the max to and squash it, it, down people. And, and it goes beyond DID, SRA. I mean, there, there is a level of mind control that goes over every broadcast, over all the media, over all the university training and everything else. I mean, it's, it's just, it has permeated our society, and yeah. God's getting ready to snap that thing in two in Jesus' well, name. Well, that's exactly what's getting ready to happen. And so, so when you get that... If you've been in a pit and God has, has brought you out and you've got that, that's the time you've got to dig in and don't don't back off because it, it'd be easy to just say, man, I'm free, I'm going to go do this. That's when you got to dig in and learn the truth, yes. learn your authority because, because then you'll go ahead and advance because there will be a time after that. It's like when you first get saved. There's this grace period that comes with that, and boy, just – you just feel so wonderful for a while, but the enemy doesn't leave you alone. If he's got any place to come and attack you, he comes and attacks, and then a lot of people backslide. You know, they just, and I, my goodness, I did that. 
and you just can't hold up under all the pressure. But God's getting ready to just bring people out of the pit. You may have been in a pit your whole life, and you just, we, we used to even say that. Me and my sister would say, man, this is the pits. I don't know if that was part of what we'd been taught, <laughs> but we'd say that, you know, if the situation was bad, this is the pits. Um, but God's getting ready to bring people out. He's always had a hold of you. He's not left you. It's just there are so many things we've not been taught, we've not known's going on. We haven't even had the tools to fight or the, the knowledge we needed to fight. No, because the enemy has systematically moved us away from the Word of God. Yeah. And, and, and has, has so watered down the Word. Mary, well, some of the statistics I'm seeing right now are frightening. That over half, over half of evangelical pastors do not believe in the inerrancy of the Word of God. They believe it's full of fables and myths. You know what? Then why are you in ministry? Because go be go go be a car salesman. Because they're they're doing well. There are, there are people that don't want to hear that that you've got to quit sinning. There are people that just they just remember how many people we've run into through the years that say, "Well, I just go to church for the praise of worship." But the truth is, is we need to be going for the word to be taught. Absolutely, praise and worship is wonderful, and it sets the stage for the presence of the Lord. And and I love it, but it's almost like people just want to go for a concert. They either want to go for a concert or the, how many times have I heard, you know, the you know, the church is okay, but I tell you what, the, the, uh, their, their, their children's program, because I get relief from my kids, so I have some place I can put them where I can just sit back and relax. Uh, we, we, we have made church so many things that it's not supposed to be. And I'm not, I'm not speaking against children's programs at all, because I think if, uh, if children's programs do their thing, those kids end up fired up and, and could outrun the adults sometimes spiritually if you're, if you're not careful if the adult side isn't doing what it's supposed to be. But it can also um, get kids to where they just want excitement and entertainment, yeah. and it's hard for them to sit in services. That's why I recommend you let kids sit in there. Yeah. You know, if a baby starts crying, you can take them to the back, but kids need to be in there in the – where the word's being taught. Well, and they need to be able to sense the anointing and understand. Right. And when even, God you know, to we're going to fix activity packs and things where kids can do, sit there and have something to do. It's hard for little kids, you know, to sit there, but they need to be in, in the anointing. They do. And so we can make all kinds of, of situations easier like that. But I, I'm just so concerned about the state of the church. And I think that's, I think we're going to see a lot of them just close down. I think that's coming. I think that um, that God is getting ready to do such a move that that, that is going to become almost a side issue to what what we're getting ready to see. And I, I think we're going to see a time when if, if ministers will really take the time to preach the Word of God in depth and really deal with issues. And you can't do that in a 20-minute sermon. I mean, 90, you know, Spurgeon actually – called his entire uh, body of ministers and students into prayer saying, listen, one of these days we're going to get to the place where the, where the body won't tolerate at least a two-hour sermon. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not advocating for two- and three-hour sermons, but uh, going into the depth that we need to go into. And I think we even need to even, uh, we may do some of this at the conferences, break down into yeshiva mode where it's just questions and answers. And some of this we're going to have to just audio tape, not videotape, simply because I'm going to be all over the place if I do stuff like that. But because uh, it causes the people to engage, mm-hmm. and that that's actually the Hebraic model uh, that the Apostle Paul used. That he even borrowed from the synagogue model when he when he said, "Listen, there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Those were all functioning offices in the synagogue, and had been that way uh, ever since Ezra and Nehemiah set up the synagogue model." Well, it's almost the only way you can learn because if you've got a question, you need to be able to present the question so they can give you scriptural background. Yeah. Of what the answer is. I mean, I, that's what I had to use with you. Oh, yeah. Because I, there were so many things I didn't understand. So many things you didn't understand. And sometimes what you're going to find out, too, is that as, as a congregation begins to hash this out, that they can either, either ask questions or give input that even takes the preacher beyond where he is. Because the, they, can, they can see something from a little bit different perspective mm-hmm. than he does. And so it's, it's very valuable. Uh, you know, that's why when, when you set this back, and let's, let's, say, let's go to 1 Corinthians. When Paul said, you know, let the women be silent in church, uh, well, you, you have to understand that, that this was a synagogue model. All the men said up front, the women were way up back in the balcony, 
and they were having a Shiva. And why would this? This is not being um, sexist because in Hebraic thought, men were more sinful than women because it was the sin of Adam. So they needed the more instruction because they were also ahead of their households that they were responsible. And so you have all these Gentiles coming in not knowing that dynamic. And so there's there's questions being answered, and they're debating stuff back and forth. And all of a sudden, Harriet way up in the balcony, Harry, what does that mean? And so Paul said, listen, when this is going on, you're, you're way up in the balcony, you're, you're disrupting the yeshiva. So you, you and your husband can talk about that when you get home. It wasn't that, you know, every woman has to zip their lip during the entire service and they can't do anything. You have to understand the, the, the cultural context in which that was written, but they were mm-hmm. having yeshiva. And, and uh, I think because we don't have that, it's, it's, like almost, it's almost like an industry. Crank it in, crank it out, and, and beat the Methodist to the local chicken place, you know, and the way that we sometimes do our stuff. Instead of, instead of really, listen, let's, let's take the time to really get people founded in the word and understand what they're thinking. Uh, so I, I, think there's, I, th- I think we're going to have to rethink our model because it's not working. Uh, I did a uh, uh, a message for uh, Tom Horn's conference last year, and, and they said, "Listen, we're gonna we're gonna have to redo things because the model that we're using is not producing strong believers." And so I I, I think in that what we're gonna see, and and Mike Spalding and I were talking about this. I think the time of the really big conferences is over. I think there's gonna be more. We're gonna see more intimate like ones like we're gonna be doing well, here. They I may think pop gonna, up all over the. Place. They're gonna pop up all over the place. Uh, I think also that the the time of the mega church now there are there are a few mega churches that have been uncompromising and I tell you what yeah there I, are and for those preachers I tell you what I will hold their code any day of the week okay and and I want to honor them but there have been a lot of them that have let Laodicea sway those ministries to keep the ones coming I think their time is over and I think those things are going to begin to wane well I think they almost create a monster that they have to fund yes. I mean, imagine that if you had all these staff members and and all all these bills that have to be paid and everything, and then you have to have people coming and paying tithe to support it. I mean, it they'd create a monster. There, I, there are ministries I know of that just the uh, just the salary and the electric bill is like almost a million dollars a month. And when you when you start having that, and then you have your mortgage and all these different things, yeah, can you imagine uh, that? It, it, there, there is such pressure that can be on that, and and you know, my hat is off to those that are, that can successfully do it, stay yes, true to the word, and stay out of debt, mm-hmm. uh, because the, the last thing you want is the banker putting, uh, and, and especially what we know with banks right now, I, I bet they're seething at the bid if they if they can get an edge and shut a church down. I think they do it with some banks, and so guys. I, I think we're going to see things dramatically change in the days ahead. But God's got a plan. He does, and he He wants us to be more than conquerors. Yes. That's what the Word says. We're to be overcomers. And I think we, we need to change what that means because when you say that in much of the church, that means you've got a Mercedes Benz out front, you have a Learjet in the hangar for the church, and you, that's not more than an overcomer. More than an overcomer is you're free from the enemy. Well, that's it. And when you pray, heaven moves. And you have That's your basic, an and you have your daily needs met, and you don't have mm-hmm. all this stress and pressure on you all the time. That there, that there is a song in your heart, and there's a praise in your mouth, and that you can see God moving in your family. And you're no longer in a pit, no, where you're trying to claw out and you fall back down, have all this weight on you. But it's like I, I would imagine a mountain goat. You know, have you ever watched mountain goats? They can be on a little bitty ledge. On a mountain, they just navigate that thing. And I, I'm telling you, that's what we're getting ready to see. People that have been in pits their whole lives, not only get out of the pit, they're going to conquer the mountain. They are. And that's the anointing. And, Father, right now for every everyone listening to this, Father, that find themselves in a pit, Father, I ask that you would throw them a rope to get them out. Yes. Father, throw them, throw them the things that they need, Father. Lift them out, pick them up out of that pit. Father, Hold set them, them yes. set them on the rock of Messiah. And Father, give them the, t- the time they need to learn the word. 
Father, hear the truth of their hearts. Hear what their hearts are crying yes. out, that you have yes. remnant that are crying out, I want to serve God. I want to be faithful if I could just get out of this pit, if I could just get this pressure off me. Father, I ask that you would hear that cry. Father, that you would deliver them right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, that you would give them an anointing once you set them on the, that rock to devour the word of God, to get lost in you so much in prayer, that they learn their authority. And Father, the next time the enemy shows up to try to dig a pit around them, what they're going to find is a giant killer. One that says, by my God, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can, I can jump over a wall that my God has taught my hands to fight, my, has taught my, my fingers to fight, my hands to make war and taken down the enemy. Because Father, the truth is every one of us have been called to take out the trash, to get it out of our lives and to keep it out and to keep the pigs out of the parlor and to keep, keep the enemy from trying to invade. Father, give us an anointing to drive out the ites, to establish your kingdom, and then becoming that light. Because even though darkness is coming, in the book of Isaiah it says that, listen, there's going to come a day that gross darkness like the earth has never seen is getting ready to come on the earth. But in the midst of that gross darkness, the word declares, but your light has come. That's right. You see, the darker it gets, the brighter we get. That's the kingdom principle that you need to establish, Father God, in our lives. Let Jesus shine through us. Let the power of God shine through us. Father, I ask that you would, within the hearts of your remnant, that you would just release the fire of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And Father, let it burn out the chaff. Father, let it be like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Father, let it burn out every bondage on them that they come out of that thing, not yes. only not smelling like smoke, but they go out of that thing with the, with the fire of God on the inside yes. of them. And they're a functioning priesthood. Yes. They're a functioning tabernacle filled with the glory of God, ready to take his presence into the world. And Father, Mary and I just thank you, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the Kingdom of God in the Bible, and who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the Principality's wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The Kingdom Priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com
informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.